We are taking your phone calls this morning for Congressman Mike Rogers, the Republican from Brighton, and the, he serves on the Intelligence Committee. Our number is 888-900-9966, 888-900-9966. He is here in our Gillespie Group storefront studio with 42 days left until the general election. You can ask him about health care. You can ask him about national security, just about anything that you want. Um, I will ask you first, though. Uh, Good morning, by Good the way. Good morning, sir. Good to nice see you. Nice to see you here. Uh, Mike Busley is with us, the founder of the Grand Traverse Pie Company. And uh, he, he's kind of like Mike Illich and Art Van. He started with one store, and now he's starting to spread around. Uh, he's also got me spread around from eating those pies. Uh, yeah. Thanks a lot. But they're <laughs> fantastic. I'm just curious, since he's here, I thought it would be interesting. You, uh, you're con still considered, well, how many shops do you have? We have 18. 18. Is that still a small business, I technically? Would consider it. Yeah. Okay. They call it kind of a stage two business. You, you're, you're not a startup, mm -hmm. but you're not Art Van or, uh, you know, a pizza chain. But you're yeah. kind of in, it's in a, uh, a phase of some businesses kind of go, go south and, and uh, go away, and some grow to the next level like those gentlemen. So we're kind of right in the middle now at what they call second stage. How so many employees? Oh, boy, over 400. Over 400 now, employees. Wearing our apron. Are yeah. you concerned about, uh, you know, what's happening at the federal government level and, and uh, Congressman Rogers uh, beyond a question like that? I mean, what can you say to somebody at a, at a stage like that? Is it a good time to expand? Should, should he wait? I mean, just well, given the tea leaves. He, here's the problem. One of the reasons the economy has slowed down so much, if, you, if he decides today he wants to hire Mike Rogers for $35,000 a year in December, uh, he's got other costs on top of it will cost uh, – darn near $45,000 for that employee. That's what it will cost him mm -hmm. to pay me 35000 He doesn't really know, no business does, what that employee, what I'm going to cost him in January of next year because of the rules, regulations, everything coming forward. So it's pretty hard for a business owner to say, well, okay, I'm going to hire somebody, even though next year, I mean, how many pies does he have to sell uh, to make up that new increase in cost for having me as an employee? That's what that whole degree of uncertainty has slowed down hiring all across the country. Uh, matter of fact, at 1099, probably, I'm sure you're going to get whacked with this. On average, right now, uh, it, when somebody uh, comes in and I sell pecans uh, to the store and it's mm -hmm. over $600 and I'm an independent contractor, Mike has to fill out a 1099 form and send it to the federal government. They do that about 10 times a year under the current rules. That's going to change, and at the end of the year, that will go from 10 to almost 100 because anybody that does business with him over $600, he has to go in the back room. I mean, he's not, that means he's not baking pies or negotiating deals or hiring people. He's filling out paperwork for the federal government. That's all coming. And so I argue if we can get, take, take those issues off the table, he's gonna, he'll have the ability to grow, and he, he'll, he'll know where strategically he can grow and hire more people and get his business to where he wants to get it. Are you expanding or hiring right now? We will be shortly. We're, so there's some limited hiring across uh, Michigan in our shops, but then there's going to be some additional hiring fairly soon. I think where we see, there's a lot of uncertainty, as you mentioned, and um, so our accountants, accountant fees go way up because we're, we're sitting trying to predict what's going to happen, and they're going to try to learn what's going to happen in terms of Michigan business tax or, you know, the different thing. It's very complicated, and so year to year, we'll, we'll, we'll put aside money for that, and we, we won't have needed to, so there'll be, you know, that'll, that's good. But then there's other years we, we haven't, when you don't know what to plan, it's hard to, hard to plan for it, and there are surprises. And so when there are a bunch of surprises, then you, you kind of you hold, hold things close and, don't, and you don't grow. So I think simplification and, and clarity, because I, I want to just make pie. I want to make sandwiches and connect with guests. And, and I think if we do a good job with the values of our company and our guests reward us, then, then the numbers should just, if it should be fairly mm. simple to predict what's going to happen, and I've got a controller and our accountants to, to take care of that. But when you're spending too much time trying to predict what the new rules are going to be, then you're right. Then you don't spend the time growing the business like you could. So I think simplification and, and clarity is it will help small businesses. I was with a car dealer from Brighton, Jim Ritz. Uh, he sells Chryslers and uh, this weekend, and he said the hardest problem for him really is hiring anyone because he's got jobs available for car salesmen or car you know, women to sell cars, but people are, are living so well off the dole that they don't want to take the risk of going to a commission-based job. 
Are we are we providing too many handouts to people who are unemployed at the moment? Well, at some point it has to end, but you can't lump those folks in with the other folks who are out pursuing employment and who can't are trying find to it. do the right thing. Can't find it. I mean, you know, we were we were pushing mm -hmm. over fifteen percent, and yes, there are fo there are jobs available that people didn't apply for. Okay, I get it, but to lump them all in, I'm not really sure is a fair fair mm -hmm. assessment of people who are truly out there trying to do it. And you know, they're going to make the decision at the end of the month, do I have enough to eat or do I, can I pay my, not pay my light bill this month? Those decisions were being made. Uh, and again, my argument is you don't need an unemployment plan if we get out of the way of companies like Jim's and let him make decisions about employing people and growing his business. Are you a compassionate conservative? I mean, I, I think by definition conservatism is, is compassionate. It always believe, and I believe, that we're there for a helping hand. Now, you can't be there forever. We can't make everybody successful. You can't you know, bring, make everybody mediocre. Uh, but sometimes uh, you fall down, and, and we ought to, somebody ought to be there to stick out a hand temporarily mm -hmm. to get you to the next place uh, so that uh, you can enjoy all the fruits of labor. At the same time, that means you can't stand in the way of entrepreneurs who are trying to take risks uh, and hire people and grow their businesses. And I think, to me, that's always been the compassionate way to get there. It's not compassionate uh, to take away from people who are trying to be successful and give it to people who uh, have given up on themselves. Uh, that You can't do that. Uh, over time, that means you'll have less successful people. And I argue this, this whole fight we're having now about we're, we don't like people who are successful, think about what that means. That means you don't like the American model. If you say, well, I don't know, most people are successful. Those small business owners are making, their company is making $250,000. That's bad. Yeah. No, that's good. And the day we start saying, gee, these successful people are bad, uh, you, you've, just, you've just changed the way America has looked at itself for the last 230 years, has the largest economy in the world, has the largest middle class in the world, and I don't know why we'd walk away from that. It goes all the way back to the pursuit of happiness, really, Absolutely. as a basic tenet. Yeah, I absolutely. see even Cuba now. Uh, is going to lay off something like uh, half a million workers uh, next winter, this January, and they're going to give opportunities for ownership and to create business in Cuba, of all places. Now, wasn't there a quote that I didn't, I, well, I don't have the exact quote, but I was taken aback by it, where somebody asked Castro about, were you upset that the Cuban model didn't work in the rest of Central and South America? And he said, heck, the Cuban model didn't work here in Cuba. Yeah, now he <laughs> claims that's not what he meant. <laughs> Where's, I don't see how that could possibly be. I think there was a moment, of, a moment <coughs> of clarity for the uh, dictator. Of Cecilia in Okemos, you're in the air at 888-900-9966 with a question for Congressman Mike Rogers. Well, good morning, Congressman Rogers. It's always a pleasure to have a chance to talk with you. Well, thank Here's you. my question. Mm -hmm. How can conservative Republican voters defeat a big machine like Virg benero has got behind him for the governorship in Michigan? What's well, the one word of advice you'd have for us? Um, just people getting involved. I, you know, I, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. I do coffees all over uh, mid-Michigan in the district, and uh, people are showing up who have never been involved before, uh, and they're being drawn to this notion of, listen, this, the government has to stop going on the direction it's going. It cannot have the largest deficits in U.S. history and, d and triple our debt in just the next five years. And all of those things are bringing people in. And the trick is, is to reach over the fence and talk to people and tell them about getting involved and going and voting. Uh, the most powerful endorsement a candidate gets uh, is from an individual who takes the time to tell a neighbor, a friend, or somebody they work with, hey, you should look at this candidate. Uh, I'm going to vote for, you know, whoever, and you ought to consider it too. You'll be surprised how much power and influence that has, and you'll likely get that person to vote with you because they trust you. They know you. Uh, and it's really just grassroots involvement. Thank you, Cecilia. But before you go uh, worrying too much about Rick Snyder, there's a story this morning that says he spent $2.1 in political consultants from all across the country in his primary effort. That's more than the $1.6 million spent by all the other candidates combined. So he's a machine of his own right and a machine with lots of money to spend. Kathy in Lansing, you're in the air at 888-900-9966 with a question for Congressman Rogers. Hi. I have actually contacted your office on several occasions and participated in your phone 
town hall thing, and I have yet to get an answer to the one specific question I have asked repeatedly. Well, you've come to the right place this morning. Well, I am glad to hear that. (laughs) What's the question? I'm listening intently to all the discussion about the small business and the spending, and I would like an answer to government math. Medicare is a big concern for people of my age who are surviving, not living, but surviving on Social Security income exclusively. Mine is $900 a month. Can you please explain to me how Medicaid, and I I know the difference, Medicare is federal, Medicaid is state, I understand that, but you still represent Michigan people. Mm -hmm. How is it that I am expected to spend $600 a month in medical before I can get Medicaid assistance. Can you figure that math out for me, please? When I have 900, my so-called spend down is 600 a month before I get any Medicaid assistance. Okay, Thank Kathy, you let's get an answer for you. And I appreciate it. And there's, there's got to be some <coughs> other numbers in there that, uh, other than that $900 Social Security check, if they're asking you to spend down $600. Uh, and if there's not, you can, clear, you can certainly call my office, uh, and we can contact uh, the Medicaid folks for you. But normally there is other income. You must have other income or other assets uh, in order for them to, to make that requirement. If, if the numbers are what you say they are, you wouldn't have that spend down requirement. So if there's some confusion that we might be able to help with, please call our office here in Lansing and we'll get somebody. Actually ask for Penny. She handles uh, my uh, pen- say, Remember Penny for your thoughts. She, uh, she'll handle all, all our Medicare and Medicaid issues in our office, so maybe we can offer you some, some, some help and assistance. That's a good way to remember it. Penny for your thoughts or your questions or your concerns at the office of Congressman Mike Rogers. Republican from Lansing and Brighton. Jim and Napoleon, you'll be up next. Sharon and Coldwater and Susan in Maple Rapids will go really quickly in the next segment with questions for Congressman Mike Rogers. I'm Michael Patrick Shields at 35 after the hour all across the state of Michigan.